Welcome back to another video. There's the ducks. Always, always an animal interrupting. So today is all about harvesting. It's actually a Sunday afternoon and it's been raining all morning, but it's now settled down. It's not windy and it's not cold. The ground's had a totally good water because it's been so dry. We've had a few days of really um, lots of heavy downpours, but it's not really soaked in. It's just been sort of flash rain, if you like. So we're finally able to get outside and to get some harvest. And I say finally because it feels like this year has just been a, a slow, slow to get started. So today we're going to be harvesting. I've got lots of beetroot in the polytunnel and I'm going to show you all the different varieties that we've got and we'll see which one did best for us here. But it's going to be a fruit year, 100% going to be a fruit year. We've had fantastic strawberries. The raspberries are coming in abundance. We've got an escaped chicken. That's what we've got. And the apples are doing fantastic. The cherries, um, gooseberries, there's so much to do and to look at and to harvest as much as we can today of the things that are ready. So, and one thing I have learned since we moved here is that I can't do it all myself. So I'm asking for help on this one and the whole family is gonna come out and we're gonna get busy picking as much as we can. We'll, t we'll eat what we can fresh and I'm gonna be preserving as much as we can as well. The other thing that I have got are a few turnips that are ready. So I'm really, really excited because it's been a long time coming this year and hopefully this is the start of us getting going now, getting busy. There's the escapee chicken. I'll have to start off by getting her back in. There's our first harvest of gherkins from tiny, tiny babies to quite meaty and chunky. And these are just going to go in a jar to ferment. So that's what I'm going to do with most of these. Or I'll pickle them. But this is absolutely fantastic. You can eat them at any size really up to you. Don't anything bigger than that ideally. But what I'll be doing is probably coming out about this size. I'm picking them at that size now. But these guys are just going quite well. So I'll be callousing these plants up onto this, whoops, where is it? That piece of wood there, once they get long enough and then they can just trail along. But for now, they're just kind of going up some short bamboo canes and then they'll grab onto things and make the way up and across the greenhouse roof. But I'm pleased that's our first little harvest and I'm gonna be fermenting these as soon as I go in later. Well, this is my bowl and this is Stephen's. <laughs> and between us, I would say we've probably got about three kilos of strawberries there and that's to add to the about approximately five or six that we've already had. So that's a really good harvest, but we've been rained off a little bit for now. So we still need to get the gooseberries, the black currants, quite a few other things yet. So bear with us. It was raspberries the other thing and you had forgotten something. We're gonna get those next. Well, it's getting late and we've got six strawberry cordials with a hint of rhubarb. They've all sealed, except this one. So you can still see that that's popped up. That's fine, that can either be reprocessed. The kids are at the window, just ignore them. <laughs> um, that can either be reprocessed or it'll just get put in the fridge and it'll be good in the fridge for four months. These were all in sterilized jars, so we're good there. I've got another batch of jars sterilizing in here. That's a little bit vicious actually. Just turn that down a bit. I've got a sugar syrup on the go here because of the all of the fruit that we have picked. I'm going to be bottling um, black currants and strawberries tonight. Let me just turn this off. Sorry. I'm in the middle of starting the ferments for the gherkins um, or the mini cucumbers, whatever you want to call it. And the other thing that we've got going on, we've done some raspberries in gin. So it's just raspberry sugar. I think there's about 350 grams of raspberries 
150 grams of sugar and about 700 centiliters of gin. It was just what we had left. That's the strawberry one that we started the other day. That's looking really well. Um, and that's the decanted rhubarb gin, that one actually. I'll have to get it labeled so we don't get uh, mixed up. But for now, for now, I'm gonna get on with these ferments. I'll let you know how I get on with it. Um, I'll show you the end result. And if it's good, then I'll show you the recipe. Um, it's really, really simple to do. Uh, so I'm just gonna get that on and then leave that for a few days. All of the other uh, raspberries and things that I haven't yet got to, I've just put in jars and they're gonna go in the fridge out in the cold room. And then over here, we've just got all of the other fruit that I'm in the middle of processing now, but I won't get to it all tonight. Absolutely gorgeous it is. The shelves are building up. This is literally just what we're doing this week on here. So obviously they'll all get transferred to the stores and to the dresser, etc. Once we're once we're well underway. So with the abundance of strawberries that we've picked, these are all homegrown strawberries. We are going to be making strawberry wine. So we've made a strawberry cordial. We've bottled some. We've made jam. We've dehydrated some, which are just there, lovely to snack on in the winter. But we've got to think ahead as smallholders, and I want to be getting not just a year's worth of food on the shelves, but as I joked about in one of the recent vlogs, a year's worth of wine, plus a, more than a year's worth of wine on the shelves. So we all know that's at least 52 bottles then, right? <laughs> anyway, we're gonna make strawberry wine this time. I've never made it before, but it's supposed to be absolutely delicious. And apparently this one comes with a warning. What does it say? This is a fortified wine, so we'll be very strong. So it's fortified with brandy, so I need to have a read up exactly what that means but i'm following a recipe from the river cottage one of the little handbooks so it's by the trusty john wright so pam corbin is the my preserves go to john wright is the boozy go to so we're going to get this recipe followed and we'll see how many strawberries we've got uh, weight wise to get started but just for one demi john which i think it's is it four and a half liters is that right one gallon or anyway one standard demi john um is two kilos of strawberries and i think we've got a bit more than that here so we're going to get cracking Right, this is my favorite time of the fruit harvest, the cherries. Now, two years ago, we made some cherry brandy and it was absolutely delicious. And we've been waiting two years to get some more on because we had no cherries whatsoever last year. We had no fruit, in fact, whatsoever last year. And now, check this out. We've got absolutely hundreds and hundreds of ready cherries on this tree. And if I just whiz you over to this tree. There's even more on this one. But these ones are a bit behind that other one. So I'm going to get a harvest off that other tree now. Get the brandy on. And we'll leave this one for another week. And then we'll come and get this. I brought a little helper with me to do the dirty work. Because some of the best ones are quite high. And some of these branches are quite thin so as i'm still carrying a bit of lockdown weight <laughs> i'm going to get grace up to get the best ones so let's get to picking best fruit on the small holding get 
1.6 kilos, which is just enough. You need a kilo of cherries pitted. So by the time I take all the stones out, that'll take some weight out. So a kilo of cherries to a liter of brandy and 300 grams of sugar. Now last year, we only made 500 mil or 700 mil just to try it. And it was the best thing we've ever made. I think it was anyway. And it lasted about a fortnight. So this year, we're going big. We're going two liters in this and then I'm going to go out and get another one and we're going to make another two litres so we're going to get these will do for our first litre we picked hardly half of that tree so we'll let the others ripe on the tree and then we'll start on the other tree so we're going to get two litres off that first tree I showed you and two litres off the second one so I'm going to get the pit in these and then we'll put it in the bowl Woo! is that not the best looking bowl of cherries you've ever seen today <laughs> maybe here sometime. We did have a cherry pitter tool that like you just put your cherries in, press the button, you pop the stone out, but can't find it. So this is where I'm gonna spend most of tonight, but it's worth it. Because after we do all this and get all the pips out, these are soaked in brandy for a month or so. We take, we take them out, cover them in chocolate, and they're absolutely amazing as well. So it's a painstaking task, but it's a one I'm willing to do. Right, so after three days, we've pitted the <laughs> cherries. Well, I've pitted the cherries. So after taking all that out, it's about 1.2 kilos left. So the quick recipe I looked up was a kilo of cherries to a litre of brandy. This is just the cheapest brandy Tesco ad and 300 grams of sugar. So I'm just gonna pour them all into this jar all together and give it a good mix. I've already, oh, was that a pip? I've already cleaned all the table and all the walls because there was absolutely juice everywhere. And when I took the stones out, I took the stones out actually over the bowl that I was putting the cherries in so it caught all the juice as well. So that's 1.2 kilos of cherries. 300 grams of sugar. And the magic ingredients. They'll smell better than that in a month's time. And that's it. Right, it's done. Get the glasses. <laughs> so just put the top on, make sure it's got a good seal. Don't want to shake it too vigorously to break up the cherries because like I say when these cherries are finished with they're going to be absolutely beautiful coated in chocolate oh, can't wait can't wait for winter harvested another huge batch of blackcurrants so I've got the ones from the other day which have been bagged up and in the stores fridge and I'm just going to basically make a blackcurrant jelly out of both of these well I'm going to weigh them and see how much I've got and if I've got anything left um, that doesn't fit the recipe then I'll make something else now the reason we've picked a jelly is because Stephen and I were talking last night we were going to make a jam um, which obviously uses up all of the fruit and you don't get the pulp waste discard which we won't discard obviously when we make jelly and we were just saying how we're going to start this new grocery challenge in September. And one of the things that we're looking to do is see what we can substitute using things that we've made ourselves. So using all of our fruit, we're bottling it all. You've seen what we've been doing with the strawberries and everything. Um, freezing as little as possible because we don't want the freezers on um, unless we have to for meat and things like that. But even that, we're putting shelf stable stuff, stuff of your, of your, shelf stable stuff as you've seen. Anyway, what I'm going to do, um, the, sorry, the reason for the jelly is to replace um, honey, actually. So we did make dandelion honey. It was absolutely delicious. Didn't last two minutes. But instead of having to just buy in 
um, honey and especially the price of uh, raw organic honey and things like that. If we visit a local shop, um, we'll support those if we want some from that point of view. But rather than buying the cheap stuff from Aldi, which we have done in the past, we're going to try and cut down our consumption of it, which we've been doing for the last three weeks very successfully, and replace it with things that we've made from home. Now, the reason it's jelly instead of jam, I will get to it, <laughs> is because the kids are more likely to have the jelly, basically. So, and if it doesn't set, it's a syrup. We all know how that goes. So I'm going to basically get on with making some of that now, weighing it out. I've got to go out in an hour to collect Grace, being a taxi of mum. Um, so I'll figure out how that works around it. And then I want to do a gooseberry one as well. And even a wine, maybe. That won't be for the kids, though. <laughs> right, we're going to get busy with that today. So I've got 1.8 kilos, about four pounds of black currants, rinsed and in the Dutch oven. You don't need to worry about de-stemming them when you're making a jelly because you're essentially going to run that through a sieve or a jelly bag and it's the residual juice that you'll add the sugar to. I'm actually just sterilising the jar lids, which isn't something I always do for jams, um, but I am this time just because I really want to be careful to make sure these will last as long as possible because it's a really good harvest of currants this year. So um, I've just put three pints of water in with the black currants there and I'm just going to soften them down so that they become a bit of a puree because essentially it'll take about 20 30 minutes because essentially that um the softer they are the easier they'll pass through the sieve and the more bang for your buck you get in at least that's what i think anyway and then we'll add the sugar i'll give you the ratios because i'd like to keep this recipe for next year because if it works out um then i'll just this is the one that i'll stick to and repeat each year i've tried to make jelly before and it worked out okay but i didn't keep the recipe so that's something i'm trying to learn from i wondered what this was in the camera it's my uh it's not brutal. I use it to, uh, to got the supermarket on. Guys, <laughs> right, I'll be back in a bit. Sterilise the jars because these are not going to be water bathed. I don't think they are anyway. I'll check the recipe. Um, most English you, uh, re most English recipes don't need water bathing for jam and jellies. Anyway, I've put the oven on to 140. I've rinsed these off. The, the clean. I've just warmed them up in um, with warm soapy water. Rinsed them off. The lids have been boiled for 10 minutes. They're just gonna sit now and until it goes cold, that's totally fine. And I'm just gonna put um, the jars in the oven for 10 minutes, then all should be good to go. By the way, I smashed a glass. That's why the broom was there, I'd forgotten. I need to, or a mug, I need to get that cleaned up as well. Anyway, these are gonna go in for 10 minutes um, and they'll just stay in there and we'll be ready to use them. They'll stay sterilized. So when it comes to putting them up, they'll be totally fine. Whilst that's on, I've decided I'm gonna dehydrate a few things. I wanna get a load of herbs today as well, but I wanna get one job finished before I start another. So while that need, that'll take about half an hour, if not a little bit longer for the black currants to soften. I'm not in a rush, just a low, slow simmer for those. The, the, if, you, if you boil it too quick, you won't extract all of the juice in my experience. So that's what I'm gonna try and do. So I'll leave those on until I need to leave to go and get my daughter. Then I'll strain them when I get back and get the rest of the process done. But I don't wanna not use my time. Um, I do have a load of pots and things like that to get washed, so I'll get that done. But also I'm gonna get the dehydrator on. I'm gonna put some black currants in. I'm gonna put some raspberries in. And I think that's it for now. Um, but I wanna get a load of the herbs done as well, but I won't put those in the dehydrator. Now I do like to use the full dehydrator when it's on, so I'll have a look, see what else I've got. I might have some strawberries to put in as well. So that's gonna go on now, and that'll be lots of good um, healthy snacks for the winter just to put on your you know your breakfast cereals your ice creams and all of those carries on so very nice next up dry raspberries as well both of these will go on at starting at just 40 the lowest temperature on my little dehydrator there um celsius that these is trays are just the um just the normal trays that i've got with the dehydrator with the liner on so these are just it's just an andrew james dehydrator i think it was like 45 pounds six years ago something like that and with raspberries, all I'm doing is I'm just literally pouring them on. Sorry, this is me the wrong way around, handed wise. And I'm going to space them out because you want as much air between them as you can. And if there's any dodgy ones, then I'll be picking those out. I did see one. So if the, these bits here are just like flowers that were uh, from outside. I haven't washed these. If you can avoid it, you should because they'll just turn to mush. That was the one that I wasn't happy with. And then I'm just going to space all of these out best I can. And then I'll just keep going in to the dehydrator every um, every couple of hours and moving them round. You can see some of these are starting to mush a little bit, but they will be perfect when they're dehydrated. Um, these are actually off our Memesis bed, the one that I always say I don't like. So I am grateful to it for producing something, but it's um, this is probably its best year of fruit to be fair to it. So I'm pleased. Not as good as the other ones. 
Now I sound ungrateful. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to spread these out, get them on the dehydrator and get those away. And the other thing I'm going to do, as I don't want to waste the space in the dehydrator, as I said, I'm going to go and get blackcurrant leaves, raspberry leaves and strawberry leaves. If there's any strawberries, I'll grab some of those and bung those in as well, because all of those leaves are good for you in different ways and you can use them in the winter or you can use them at any time, but make teas from them. So I'm just literally going to dehydrate as many anytime I've got some space just keep that cycle going as well there you go four trays on and i'll go and grab the rest before i head out and get my errands run for the so day black currants have been on for about 45 minutes if not a little longer i've got them everywhere what i'm doing is using a sieve and i'm just running it through into this um the, so the liquid's in the bottom and then i'm just mashing the pulp through don't worry about it going cloudy with it being black currants it, it's it's going to be totally fine and then the leftover pulp, which you can see there's still a lot of juice in, I'm going to put in here because I'll run that through one more time. But the pulp won't be discarded. We're going to use that again to make something else, um, maybe today, maybe tomorrow. We're in a very warm roll. I had to go outside and get all of the greenhouse watered because it's just um, really, really warm again. But because we're on a roll and because I've got a lot of gooseberries that need using as well, we're making a jelly with these guys. I want to give everything a try and if we don't like it, once we've got through it, we won't do it again. So there is about 2.5 kilos of gooseberries in this one. And all you do is literally cover with water. I'm gonna bring these to a low simmer again for about 45 minutes, and then I'm just gonna leave them so that they can all mush up, and then I will put them through a strainer again. Now, let me show you what happened with the black currants. Double strained them, and we have got this much left. Now, I think this is about, oh no, I think this is a six litre, anyway. There's a lot of liquid in there for the size of the pot and I can't add the sugar and safely make the jelly in this pot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to bring out my jam pan, but I don't know if that's induction compatible. So I'm going to have to check that or we're going to have to figure something else out. So I'm just going to leave this cool for now because you can bring it back to, um, obviously I'll bring it back up warm and put the jam sugar in. It needs to go to a rolling boil anyway for that. But for now, that's ready just to add the sugar to. And I'm gonna get the gooseberries into the same state and then we'll just get a production line going uh, because I'm gonna to need to sterilize some more jars, it seems as well. Well, on our last batch of jellies and we have got plenty of blackcurrant, plenty of gooseberry. I'll show you the results in a sec. And then at the end, we had half a pint of blackcurrant juice and half a pint of gooseberry juice left. So we have made a gorgeous colored um, mix, 50% of each really. So we'll see how that turns out and then we'll show you the end results in just a minute. This is just the gooseberry. Oh, that's got to set, set and find. This is just the gooseberry and this is the blackcurrant and gooseberry mix and they've both just come to set and find. But it, well, it all went a little bit crackers, so apologies, that was the end of that footage. But we've got it all done now, so let me show you what we've got done, what worked and what didn't. I actually made some raspberry jam as well, so I got four jars of raspberry jam, which is absolutely gorgeous. This is the blackcurrant syrup, you might notice, because it didn't set. Now, I'm going to tell you why in just a second. And this is the gooseberry. So where's this is all gooseberry jelly? So this set absolutely perfectly. This is totally delicious. So this one is blackcurrant and gooseberry, and this did set, but the blackcurrant only didn't. Now, I did do these first, and I think the reason that it didn't set is because I didn't boil them long enough to bring them up to a setting temperature. So what I did find out as I moved through doing the rest of them, once it starts to come to a boil, it takes about 10 minutes for it, for the syrups anyway, to, um, or sorry, for the jellies anyway, to reach setting point and I didn't leave the black currants long enough they were the first ones I've processed but what I have decided to do is leave them as a syrup because the kids will use these and they'll drizzle it over the pancakes and ice creams and things like that so they've all sealed so they haven't been water bath this was just literally the hot jellies the hot jams uh, or the hot jelly into the jars and get the jars on straight away and there's a little bit of an indentation which you probably can't see on the camera so they've all sealed same for the raspberry jam that's looking absolutely gorgeous and it tastes so nice and then these ones have actually been bought for us as gifts from other people so i'm really pleased with the outcome that we've got there so we've got extras for the shelf for the winter and this will replace the honey so we've got two 20 22 24 25 jars there so that's even if we went through one a week which i don't think we would have the jellies maybe of the syrup but not of the jellies then, you know, we've got half a year there. So I'm very pleased with that.
Now this has taken us a good part of a week from evenings with us working uh, during the day and things like that. So I'm going to call it a day for this video, but we have harvested the beetroot as well, which I'm going to tell you about on a different video just so I can get this one out. And this was just really all about preserves. I've mentioned the grocery budget uh, challenge that we're starting in September. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that as well in a video that I've already started. So I'm really, really excited and enthused to be sharing this with you and sharing how we'll be using these things, how we'll be using the other pressure canned shelf stable items, the meals in a jar and that we've got and things like that. And I'm gonna get sharing all of that every week in the different vlogs and things that we're doing. So let me know if you've got any ideas. I know I've got some outstanding things that people have asked for and I'll get to those as well, but I just need to do what I can when I can. So thanks for bearing with me and I hope you've enjoyed this insight into some of the preserves that we'll be doing and why we've picked what we've picked. There's literally, it feels like a million more gooseberries out there that need picking. So I'm gonna get picking those, but they don't have, they're not the thorn free ones. So that's a pain. Anyway, always grateful. I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.